Welcome. Welcome to worship at All Saints in Big Sky on this second Sunday in the season of Easter. In the church, Easter doesn't end last week. Easter just begins on Easter Sunday and continues for 50 whole days. We celebrate a whole season of Easter. And so this is the second Sunday in that season when we celebrate especially the resurrection. We welcome you who are here with us this morning. We're so glad for those of you who are here in person, and we're also glad for those who join us online this morning. This morning and every Sunday morning at All Saints, we celebrate Holy Eucharist, where Jesus Christ welcomes us at this table as, um, as we are in need of the grace that he offers us so freely. And so all are welcome to come forward to share in the Lord's Supper today. Please join us as you are able for a time of coffee and fellowship in our lower level after worship today. It is always a time to get to know each other better um, and have some coffee and treats. So come and join us if you're able. Just a few announcements that I wanted to share with you. Um, Pastor Valerie and I were able to attend the first of two pastoral uh, clergy conferences um, that take place for us pretty much every year in April. Uh, this past week, the Montana Synod, the Lutheran Pastoral Conference, took place. Um, and it was a gathering of about 70 pastors and their families and um, other folks that came along. Um, and I learned some really interesting information about the state of the Lutheran Church across Montana and northern Wyoming. There are 123 ELCA congregations that are part of the Montana and Northern Wyoming Synod. At this time, 37 of them are without a called pastor and are being served by lay pastoral associates, so lay people who have been trained a little bit in theological education and are serving often alongside full-time jobs. Um, and some of those congregations aren't being served by anyone. In addition to that 37, there are 27 other congregations that in the next few months or are already in a time of pastoral transition looking for a new pastor. So over half of the congregations of this synod are in some sort of pastoral congregational transition. And I believe that there are similar numbers in congregations across the country and in other denominational bodies. So I just lift that up for you. Um, we uh, always worship in community and in communion with other churches around the state, around the country, around the world. And so I think at this time, it is important for us to lift up, especially all of those congregations that are in a time of transition and trying to see what it will mean for them to be church at this point in the 21st century and moving forward. Um, anyway. Also, just so that you know, Pastor Valerie and I will both be heading to a second clergy conference this week um, with the Episcopalians. So we get to hang out with the Lutherans, then we get to hang out with the Episcopalians. And um, that will be up at Flathead Lake at the Episcopal camp called um, Christacon Camp. Uh, Sorry, at Camp Marshall, I have the wrong name. There's too many camps in my head. Um, Camp Marshall, and so uh, we are excited for some of the education that we're going to receive there and for the fellowship with the priests and deacons that will be there, and we'll tell you some stories when we get back from that event. Um, I also just want to lift up that downstairs you'll see a new sign-up sheet on our bulletin board. We'll be looking for, as always, uh, folks that are willing to host our coffee hour. If you have never hosted coffee hour before, but would be willing to try, um, please let us know. And there is some good person in this room right now who will help you figure out the nuts and bolts of how to make coffee. And if you want to bring some treats, that's always appreciated. 
Um, and finally, just to lift up to you, uh, Memorial Day is a work weekend at Christicon Camp, another camp that uh, we're connected with in the Montana Synod. And my family and I in the past have gone to be a part of that work weekend. It's a free weekend, um, free room and board for those that are willing to make the trek up the Boulder River, um, so south of Big Timber to get there. And um, it's a time to come together to do some work, to open up the camp for the summer season. And if any of you would be interested in coming up for a work weekend and doing a little bit of work and getting to know some great people, uh, please talk to me because it's a great opportunity to both see Krista Khan and get to know some other members of our larger, our larger church in Montana. Let's take a moment of quiet now and prepare for worship. Please rise. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Thank you. 
standing with your loved ones, may each report it in the just trial. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. He who stood by you, the man attested to you by God the deeds of power, wonders, and signs which God did through him among you, as you yourself have known. This man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed. the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I accept the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Spirit rejoices, my body also shall rest in hope. For you, Lord, have me to the grave. Now let your holy one see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second reading is from First Peter, Chapter One. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening of the day of resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, Spirit, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
order to believe, Thomas makes it clear that he must see the marks. He must actually put his fingers on the marks in the side. Thomas must see and touch the open wounds of Christ. And only then will he believe. Only then will he believe that the one who was crucified has now been raised. Only then will he say, my Lord and my God. Thomas's demand may be a little bit annoying for some of us to hear. Why does he need to ask for, not to mention get, what many of us never do? Clear, raw, empirical evidence to bolster up his belief. Most of us never get that much. We simply struggle, hold out our empty hands, open up our hearts, and pray for the Holy Spirit to bring us faith. Faith in the one whom we have not seen, at least not in the usual way of seeing, but in whom we at least try to believe. Today's gospel story would just be frustrating if we stopped there. But, but this text holds a, a deeper truth for us. It calls us as disciples of Christ, alongside Thomas, to come close to the open wounds of Christ. It calls us to, to see and to touch the open wounds of Christ's living body. And that living body is what? It is here. It is the body of our siblings, our brothers and sisters in Jesus, our neighbors here in the pew, and fellow believers around the diocese and the synod and around the world. And somehow, the text is telling us, when we are close to those open wounds, we will learn something more about belief. As you are probably well aware, the wounds of Christ, open and raw wounds, are pretty much everywhere we look. I know I saw them in the last few days at the Montana Synod Pastors Conference where Pastor Valerie and I were at as we, as we walked and talked and prayed and learned with the deacons and pastors and lay leaders of this synod. As we got close to one another, I saw yet again some of the unhealed wounds of my colleagues. One colleague is just holding his breath right now, it seems, as his child is struggling with gender identity and suicide. And another colleague is still riding the trauma of her daughter's brain surgery not so many months ago. She is able to give thanks for all the other parents who allowed their children to go through experimental medical treatment so that now her daughter has medication that will allow her to live and grow. But the wounds are not yet closed up on her. There are other wounds wounds in that room that have had more time to scar over, like my colleague who served six different army tours in as many different war zones around the world and carries more stories than I can count 
only one of which is a fall from a helicopter, and another of which is a stabbing. His physical wounds may have scarred over, but his emotional wounds are still raw. And then, of course, as it is the case in almost any room, there are the many other garden variety open wounds, but they're still real and they're still painful. Fertility struggles, progressive deteriorating medical conditions, anxiety about family or congregation, loneliness and depression after a really long winter. The wounds of Christ are everywhere around us. And I am sure you know that. I am sure you have seen wounds, touched them in the lives of those that you know and love the best just this last week. And if we wonder what our faith calls us to do in face in the face of all of those wounds, well, John's Gospel this morning offers us an answer. It tells us to live open-eyed, expecting, but even looking for those wounds. Even though so many of us try to keep them hidden. And then with Thomas, not turn away from them in fear or disgust or even pity, but turn toward them, and let me be clear, with tenderness and with respect. More, our our faith calls us to trust that in All of our wounded siblings in Christ, all of these wounded children of God around us, they are actually showing forth the resurrection to us. After all, they have somehow made it this far to this side of those wounds, and they are still with us. Or rather, God has somehow brought them there from that side to this side, and God is at work healing the wounds that may still be raw, still open to the world. And and we can help in the healing work of God's Holy Spirit when we bear witness to those wounds when we acknowledge them, honor them, and share in our hope in the resurrection. That resurrection, that healing really is possible, that new life can and does spring out of places of loss and death. It's like what the writer of First Peter, our second reading, says today, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. Even if. Even if the wounds are still raw and open, we have been given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so, as the wounded children of God, we can still rejoice. I sometimes wonder, we, we Protestants who did such a good job of cleaning out our worship spaces, clearing them of all images, if we might be helped from time to time like our Orthodox and our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters by having images, icons, of the crucified and risen one around us. 
that we might see those wounds. Not, you understand, so that we meditate more on the torture of Jesus of Nazareth. Not for that, but that we would remember and stay alert to the open wounds of our neighbors. That we would remember that our eyes would be open that we would be ready to witness to those wounds and allow them to witness to us to the resurrection. That helped by those wounds, we might better learn what it means to believe, what it means to follow the way of Jesus, what it means to follow the way of the one who is sometimes called the wounded healer. You know, when I think of all of my wounded colleagues, my heart breaks a little bit for them, as I am sure it does for you, as you think of those in your lives who are wounded and raw right now. But I also realize that in that breaking, I am I'm opened up a little bit more. And I think that's the Holy Spirit at work. No question, the Holy Spirit at work helping me break open and love them a little more than I would be able to all by myself. And truly, I think of these colleagues of mine with such awe, these wounded colleagues who work alongside wounded congregations, and yet, These congregations are doing the work of the church. They are caring for their sick members. They are feeding their communities. They are tending to the children. They are offering support to parents. They are trying to reach out and connect to young people. They are doing this even with all of the open wounds. They are caring for creation. They are putting solar panels on their churches. They are trying to help the most vulnerable in their communities. They are giving money away beyond those communities to the synod, to the church around the world, to disaster relief. And this morning, this morning, we gather in communion with them. And we gather in communion with Christians around the world, with our Orthodox brothers and sisters who are today celebrating Easter Sunday, with Protestants of so many varieties, with Roman Catholics. We are gathered this first day of the week in communion with them, with all of our wounds, whether they are hidden or wide open to the world. We gather to come to believe again. We gather to be filled with the breath of the Holy Spirit. And we gather to once again share the peace of Christ with one another. That peace, that passes our understanding, but we trust somehow takes root and renews us with courage and compassion and grows alongside all of the wounds that have not healed yet. In fact, in fact, maybe that peace of Christ finds its way into us a little more easily through our wounds. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United, oops. United in the hope of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the woman at the tomb, empower us to share your love through our words and our work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As you breathed your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. We pray for farmlands and ranches, for national parks and wilderness land. We also pray for island and coastal communities threatened by the rising sea levels. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip and uphold our community leaders, including the Sheriff's Department, our county commissioners, firefighters, and search and rescue volunteers. Support and guide our state and national leaders, our President, Joe, Congress, and Supreme Court. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You speak to your disciples throughout time. As many celebrate Orthodox Easter today, we pray for peace in the Ukraine. We also pray for peace in Palestine, Israel, Yemen, and the Sudan, in our homes and on our streets. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. You are the healer of every ill. Bring healing to any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief. We pray especially for Jeremy, Woody, Kyle, Jess, Aubrey, Carol, Guy, Brody, Jaden, Dorothea, Pete, Rick, Julie, Rick, Melissa, Sean, Bob, Penny, the Robinson family, Daniela, Isabella, Pancho, the Sarver family, Julie, Lauren, Gordon, Walden, Gail, Jane, and Jill. Hear us, O oh God. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with those we loved and have now died, including Izzy Wentz. Strengthen those who grieve her death with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of the resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen.
and also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready your creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. Yet as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join the saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit on these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of a heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, who is and was and will be, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. 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 <laughs> Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.